it was mind blowing for me at the time. So then I was like, yeah, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to just, you know, being a, a 2D designer. Hi, everyone. Today we have Jose Monroy, who is going to be talking to us about his history, about his work, and just we're just going to start digging a bit more about who Jose is. So, Jose, I'll leave it to you to introduce yourself. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks, Daniela. So, uh, yes, uh, my name is Jose. Um, I'm a footwear designer. So um, I've been in this industry now for a little over 10 years. Uh, I have an industrial design background, uh, product design specifically. So, um, you know, I, I, I feel like I, I definitely came at an advantage uh, when it comes to footwear, just because of that background, I was able to understand things a little bit more quickly. I've worked, uh, or I used to work at this company, which basically that's that's where I, I got uh, most of my training, I would say, uh, within this field. Uh, I work at that company for, for 10 years. Um, and within that company, it's a much smaller company, so I had the chance to work on a variety of different products uh, from, you know, uh, casual to athletic to some of the dressy stuff um, and some equestrian uh, uh, product as well, which that's what the company is known for. Um, and so, you know, I, I sort of got like a really well-rounded view in terms of uh the, the different approaches that you can have to uh, designing footwear product. Um, and so I've definitely used that in, in many of the projects that I've worked uh, since uh, departing from the company. It's, it's sort of in, in my nature now to, to want to bring in a, a lot of different references when I'm working on projects. Um, it's, it's like a cool way to, to introduce, uh, new aesthetics to me, you know, new functionality to pieces. And so, um, yeah, that, that's, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> so yeah, industrial design, product design, and then gone to footwear. Have you always wanted to be a footwear designer or was it something that just through your career, you ended up being there? How do you right. um, become a designer? What's that? How did you actually become a designer? Yeah, um, to be honest, I want to say I sort of landed there. <laughs> um, you know, so I I got into into uh, industrial design, and I knew I wanted to go into product. I just I just knew myself. I like to be a little bit more hands on. Um, I loved. Uh, drawing. I mean, I, I, that's been my, my thing since I was a little kid, right? And so, uh, but I, I knew I didn't want to take the art route. Uh, funny because I didn't want to take it because that's what my brother did. So I wanted to be different, right? So, <laughs> so I chose industrial design and, um, and so one thing led to another. Uh, at one point, I remember uh, clearly, um, uh, my brother, you know, telling me, you know, I should be designing soccer cleats. At the time, I, you know, soccer was my life, you know. Uh, you know, I had these grandiose dreams of one day becoming a professional. And so, um, you know, he was like, you know, you know, you're doing all these different designs. You know, why don't you just, you know, try your hand at doing a, a soccer cleat? And that to me was kind of like, oh, snap, like that sounds really interesting and really fun. And so, that's how I started moving towards that sort of side of, of product. Um, and so even, um, you know, the, the last project that I worked on um, at school, it was it was related to, to footwear. It was a soccer cleat specifically. And so uh, one of the uh, teachers and, you know, specifically, she, she, this, this guy wasn't really uh, uh, the teacher for that class. He just so happened to walk in as I was presenting and um, at the time, he was working part time for for this the, the company that I later on ended up uh, you know working for. And so he saw my presentation. He he liked what I you know what I had you know my my sort of approach to it. And so he mentioned that they were looking for new talent. To, so that's how I ended up you know landing that that position there. And um, like I said, it was it wasn't really. It's not like I had my sights on, you know, becoming a footwear designer and, you know, doing all these different things. It was just kind of like it, it just kind of happened. And, you know, after doing it for for some time, I just fell in love with it, you know, and more specifically, 
I definitely want to say the 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 more fashion side of of footwear is definitely been uh you know my thing for the longest time now it's definitely the thing i gravitate towards and now obviously with a lot of you know the i guess the the main inspiration for a lot of the different pieces that you're see seeing out there in footwear when it comes to high-end fashion you know it's definitely bringing in a lot of more of the athletic sort of functional side of, of product as well and coming from industrial design where you're constantly trying to find, you know, uh, problems to solve and, and things that work, you know, to have a reason for working. It just kind of marries perfectly <laughs> with, with the type of background that I have. And so, um, yeah, that, that's sort of how I landed there. It's interesting that you said that it, it marries perfectly. I would have understood. And like in my, in my head, I, I was thinking more that it doesn't because you know, like as an industrial designer, you end up, yeah, having to have a reason for everything and like, you know, having to think about the function and the function is the one that is kind of like guiding the form, depending mm -hmm. on which, you know, which like, you know, if you agree with that or not, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as an industrial designer and also you being, you know, when you started doing these like, you know, um, soccer um, shoes, like you you were kind of like being a user, right? Like, so you were putting yourself in the shoes of exactly. the user and like finding all yeah. this functionality and so on. But then you started going more towards the fashion side of things. And so I'm really interested to know more about like how you're making that connection. Like why, why does it actually make sense and why you as an industrial designer have this advantage? Mm -hmm. um, for me, I think the reason why it sort of marries nicely with with you know my background, I think it's <clears throat> before industrial design. I think I've always had a knack for uh, the visually pleasing, the aesthetically pleasing things. It's just I've always been attracted to those things, you know. And so, um, as uh, an industrial uh, uh, design student. Um, Function and form were always 50-50 uh, for me. It, it was never like the function become is, is first and then I'll figure out the form after, which I think was a lot of the approach uh, that uh, most of, of you know, my, my colleagues took, you know, because that's, that's how that's more or less the 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 way you go about it right and so um but for me it was never it was never really that it, it was you know aesthetic was just as important as anything else related to the project and so uh always having a knack for things that look pretty <laughs> that look interesting you know um i think that's where i i definitely started um honing in on on that side of footwear and when I came across you know uh, having a chance to design more um, lifestyle products and more maybe fashion tailored product that's where I, I could definitely see there my interest grew uh, immensely and it was kind of like that sweet spot where I'm like man I'm getting a chance to you know flex my industrial design muscle because there is you know a certain portion of those projects that you need to understand how things are built and how to build things so that, you know, it's actually functional and it's gonna, it's gonna work. Um, but also, you know, that there's this huge other part where, you know, it has to be visually pleasing. It has to be something um, that's just gonna, you know, kind of smack you in the face and be like, wow, that that's, that's gorgeous, you know? And so that's sort of uh, where for me, both of those things kind of, uh, glued together really nicely to the type of, I guess, person that I have been in and mixed with, with the background of industrial design. So I think that that's sort of <laughs> how that all came together. Yeah. And you're, you're actually nailing the, the beauty in your, in your products. So uh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, and thank it, you. it's actually like the, the, there's a lot of, you know, food worthy sounds out there and like, you know, so many, like the, specifically food worthy designers are very, very good at sharing their work, which is awesome. I see a lot of trends. I see a lot of like people doing similar things. Um, but your work specifically just stands out because some of the shapes and some of the, you know, the ways that you're combining, as you said, kind of like the functional with kind of like the more fashion side of things is very, very different. Um, and, you know, probably this question is just going to be very hard for you because you're probably just doing things because you're you, 
but you know, <laughs> how's that process like? What's your process like? How do you, you know, what's the inspiration that you take and how do you distill all of that so that it becomes like these beautiful pieces that you're now creating? Right. Um, yeah, th this question, to be honest, it it's always a question that it stumps me a little bit because even I am not sure sometimes exactly, you know, if I'm sticking to a specific sort of um, design process to reach, you know, these these different end results. Um, I can definitely say, you know, the initial inspiration plays a, a lot in, in where I'm eventually going to land. Um, and inspiration, you know, that that keeps, you know, happening throughout the process. It's not like, you know, I gather, uh, you know, let's say imagery at the beginning and then I, I stick to that imagery all the way till the end, um, which is strange because, you know, I, I've definitely met uh, uh, some colleagues, uh, a lot of colleagues actually, where that's sort of what informs the end product is just the initial, the initial collection of of uh, I'm calling inspiration, right? And so for me, it's never that. It's always been a very fluid process. Um, so, you know, in terms of inspiration for me, it's it comes from everywhere. You know, you got the, the usual suspects, you know, you have the, um, you know, automotive design, which everybody loves, you know, architecture, arts, you know, those, those, are, those are the usual ones that no matter what, if, you, if you're looking for just something to get the, the creative juices for, and you're going to find something there, right? For me specifically, I, I think I, I tend to um, definitely be attracted to more of the abstract pieces, let's say for art, you know, I'm going, let's say sculptures, right? Um, I, I used to love sculpting when I was younger. And so the, there's definitely something there where when I'm looking at a specific, let's say shape, like the way it, it flows on, on that piece or a line or just maybe the, the composition of the piece or the color palette, like all those things, I think definitely inform uh, at least a starting point for me for where I would want to take the project. But um, like I said, those are like the usual suspects. Then you have the really random ones that come out of nowhere, <laughs> which for me, I love to kind of like um, scavenge for different uh, sources of inspiration. Um, you know, I would say half of those are uh, functional pieces and, and the other half are purely aesthetic, which, you know, that kind of goes uh, with what I was saying, that the way that I approach design. And so, you know, it could be um, like fasteners, uh, you know, uh, buckles, things that, you know, right now are definitely trending because there's that there's that merge emergence of like two different um uh, sort of worlds, the more fashion side and the more functional performance side. And you, you see that a lot more with the performance pieces, right? And so, uh, you know, I, I go for things like that sometimes, or, you know, I'm looking at um, the composition of certain pieces. Um, it's like two weeks ago, I started looking at the, um, the Air Max uh, is it the, the Air, AirPod Max? Sorry, not the Air Max, AirPod Max. Um, and just the way they're built, the, the, the different uh, finishes that they're using, the different materials, the different shapes. Uh, it's just, I can kind of start seeing the, the, why the product is so beautiful. You kind of have to like stare at it for a little bit. It's very easy to look at something and be like, oh, that's super pretty. And then that's that, right? But there's a reasoning why things look pretty, right? There's a certain setup that uh, whoever created it followed to create something that's just visually something stunning, right? And so, for example, those, um, the AirPod Max, you know, it, there there's, the the chrome finishing mixed with like this matte sort of uh, gray that then they they bring in the mesh that kind of wraps around where you know the 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 ear pods would be right and so it's all those different things that together just create something really beautiful and so for me again the the inspiration can come from many different places but also in the way things are sort of built uh, i'm not saying that i would do exactly say if i'm taking inspiration from those airpods it's not going to be the exact same recipe but it, it's definitely the approach that was taken right that there's something to be learned with the way pieces are put together um and so a lot of times like i'll, I'll look i'll specifically be looking for 
um, the the one jewel from a specific uh, product or, or art piece or whatever it may be that makes it what it is, right? And so the I can usually find like one or two things within a product that I'm like, if you were to take these away, it's not that great anymore, right? There, there's just specific things that just make it innately beautiful. And so uh, with with those, I usually try to find that and then that sort of informs um, what I can bring to whatever project I'm working on. Um, and by the way, just hearing myself explain my process, it's, it is definitely a little bit difficult to understand because of the fact that it's so fluid it's never really taking a very specific route. Um, But one thing I can say for sure is uh, the way I usually work is is I always try to find, um, I call it a recipe, I always try to find a recipe for um, the first piece that I create. It has to have something that I will be able to take and use to expand upon, right? So I like to work in collections. I want to make sure that I'm telling a cohesive sort of uh, story through the line, Uh, whether it's something that can be, uh, you know, put into words or mainly it could be just something of a visual uh, uh, sort of story that blends all the pieces together, right? Um, But yeah, for anyone that knows me, they know that it's it's if I'm creating one piece, more than likely, it's because I have an idea for a whole bunch of other ones that would support that one piece. Uh, yeah, I'm a sucker for collections that can that can definitely tell that that visual story. And it's easy. You don't really have to think about it too much. It's just more like you look at the product, you're like, damn, OK, yeah, this is all very cohesive. I love that. So I think that's that's one of the main things that I try looking for in inspiration is that that recipe that I know I can just kind of build upon, you know, I love how you're, um, how you're putting yeah. it in that. Yeah, in a way, you have a book of recipes in your head, right? And you're just like fixing yeah. them, like from everything that you've learned by analyzing these products so deeply. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it is definitely, it's, I think that it, the fun part is the challenge of trying to figure out what that recipe is going to be for any future product or project that I'm working on. Uh, you know, you go through the the stage of oh my god, this this sucks. I hate everything I'm doing. You know, uh, but you have to go through those kind of like pain points to finally find something that you're excited about. That you know you can you can stick to this for you know say a month and you're gonna be happy with it, right? And so that's that's the fun part for me. It's a challenge, but it's like, it's, as soon as I find that, it's like, ah, it was all worth it, you know? Cause now I know I can just, I can work on this for, for some time. And I know I'm going to produce some really cool, interesting pieces, mm-hmm. you know? Which is kind of like, yeah, I guess it's the hardest thing to explain. Like if, if somebody was trying to learn from mm-hmm. you, how your process was in a way, it's almost impossible, right? Because it's you in your head kind of like analyzing yeah. it in a way and you know distilling it in a way that it just works for you kind of thing right and i think um one of one of the ways that i've been able to do it obviously because i've i've had to coach people in the past you know um it's it's always project based right like depending on whichever project i'm working on that'll sort of dictate how i want to uh, approach the process um, and so in that, I'm able to sort of explain it in a, in a much more sort of like workflow way. Um, but when it's, it, when it's just kind of um, as a general statement, like how do I approach it? It's, it's very broad. It's very broad. Yeah. You know? And so talking about process and, you know, you, you've mentioned you worked in this company and you probably were working with many people that had to have a say in the process. How is it right now? Mm-hmm. What What's your process like in terms of, you know, collaborating with other people? Um, how does that work and so on? Yeah, I mean, uh, now as an independent designer, you know, it's, it's definitely a little bit different. Um, I want to say I, and it's probably, I'm going to say it's different because I have 
the ability now to to pick more of the projects that I'm interested in. Uh, whereas before, you know, you work at a company, you get handed these projects, and you know that's it's your job. It's your job to just uh, you know create. And so uh, now as an independent, you know, I I have a little bit more um, sort of control over that. And in terms of the process itself, the 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 collaborative piece where you know I'm working with the client I've always been very open uh, with that piece always making sure that communication is you know constant uh, throughout the process um, I definitely like um, whoever I'm working with at the time to feel um, not feel like I'm just kind of taking the project and and doing my thing and just kind of like in the background they're kind of telling me something it, it's never been that for me and I think that's because of the piece of uh, the background of of industrial design always making sure that you're designing something that is actually going to be for the customer not just for yourself right and so I think because of those reasons you know I've always been very uh, big on having you know constant communication with whoever it is that I'm, that I'm working with or doing a collaboration with. Um, if, if anything, actually, I think you, you can learn a lot in collaborative projects when that, that sort of communication is left open for, for both parties or however many parties are involved. Um, I think everybody has something interesting and beautiful to bring to the project, something that, you know, we're not the same person. We're all different. And so everybody has their own uh, viewpoint and you can learn a lot from that. I've, I've learned a lot from, from working in collaborative projects and, um, you know, it's things that you can later use and, and take with you, you know, and, and be able to apply that to other things. And so, yeah, for me, it's, it's always been a really good thing to, to have that. Um, sort of that process open like that. How how is it open? Like, is it just kind of like a constant communication flow, a lot of feedback? That's correct. Yeah, from both sides. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, uh, it, it's uh, a lot of uh, these video calls. You know, uh, just constantly showing uh, the process where I'm at. Um, usually, the, the one that takes the longest is going to be the ideation process. You know, kind of putting the the, the the initial ideas together, and so that for me is always like creating. You know. Uh, a variety of different ideas and then you know you funnel it then you create another set of ideas based off on the ones that you funneled and then you funnel it again until it starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to where you want to get to right but in that process you know it, it's always constant communication with the other uh, person involved or people involved um, so that I, I know that I'm not um, wasting my energy on things that later on are just going to get sort of cut you know uh, I want to be very open with with the work Hello. as much as yeah, I can. Yeah, I mean, not wasting you know? your energy yeah. is important in a process. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. For and sure. so what are the tools that you're using in your process? Um, so right now, uh, sketch-wise, I'm using um, uh, Art Studio for for the iPad. Um, and I always get asked the same question, why Art Studio? Because it's not really that well known, uh, at least from the from the people that I've talked to. You know, it's always been Procreate, right? I think for me, it's always been, um, like I, I used to be, my, my workflow always included Photoshop and working with the tablet, right? And so, when I transferred to the iPad, I always wanted to find a, a program, an app that would sort of simulate what Photoshop was for me, like all the different tools and and sort of the same user interface, right? And um, at the time, you know, I, I was looking at Procreate, um, what's the other one, Sketch, some, some, I can't even remember. And then I had Art Studio. And so, um, I definitely could tell that Art Studio just merged more seamlessly with the way I was used to working. And so um, that's where I was just kind of like, I, I got to go with this. I got to go with what I know is going to work for me. And I, I've stuck to it. And it's just, um, I want to say it has uh, more options uh, than, say, your Procreate. 
Um, it's just, uh, it's a more sort of, um, it, it encompasses a lot more uh, that at least that I've been able to find it and appropriate. And so, um, so I use Art Studio for the sketch, uh, sketch phase, ideation phase. Um, Illustrator used to be a really big part of the process. Uh, now I want to say I'm kind of phasing it out a little bit just because obviously now 3D has come into play. You know, uh, I want to say that um, Illustrator was primarily my go-to when uh, building, you know, big specs and all these different things and flipping colors. But there's a lot of limitations to that, right? Um, and so now uh, it usually goes from working on Art Studio to flipping it a little bit if I need to in Photoshop, if I want to make some extra adjustments. Um, but then it goes straight into 3D, um, which is really, really nice. I'm able to to um, create whatever it is that you know that is on paper fairly quickly uh, using Gravity Sketch uh, into 3D, and I'm able to show the client uh, something that's a lot more understandable. Um, you know, something more than just a 2D sketch, you know, something that I found working at the company where I was. And, you know, even now as as an independent, it's not everybody can imagine a 3D product, right? When you're showing a 2D sketch, even with the sketches, you know, like I, um, I pride myself in, in drawing things that are going to be, um, compositionally, uh, proportionally correct to what a, a 3D product would be, right? Like an actual physical product would be, because I wanna be able to express that from the get-go, you know? Um, a, a little funny thing about that is, I remember when I was in school, you know, all my, all my friends, they all used to draw very sort of um, shapes that were very dynamic and things that just looked very cool, you know? And, I, I could never really get into that, you know, even though I really thought it was cool and I wanted to switch to that, it was it was just never the way I approached it. And so uh, I think it ended up working in my favor because I feel like that's a huge tool that I use nowadays when, you know, even when I'm in the sketch phase, it's always uh, very sort of... Um, represent it represents what it would be in, in in a physical form as best as i can as as a 2d sketch right um but even that can't be read as a 3d product from a lot of people and that's understandable right not everybody has a creative brain right and so um bringing it into uh gravity sketch you know creating something 3d off of a 2d sketch it makes a world of a difference you know you you have the ability to show uh you know many different angles, uh, many different details that would just take a, a long time to try to explain and show uh, in, in a 2D form to a client. Um, and so with that, it's just then easier when you're reaching out to, uh, say, a potential manufacturer to be able to talk through ideas on how you see things being constructed or the specific shaping of a piece or, you know, just any details in, in regards to, to the product itself. It's just a lot easier to explain once you have a, a 3D um, sort of form to it. And so, yeah, that, that's basically I go from sketching in Art Studio to Gravity Sketch to create uh, the 3D model. And then from there, uh, once we feel happy, we're, you know, we're all sort of in line on what the basic shapes, the, the functionality, the aesthetic of the product is going to be. Um, then comes, you know, the more fun part, you know, which is then polishing, adding the materials, adding the colors um, and all the beautiful things that then, you know, you can get with programs like um, uh, Keyshot, which is the one that I use. Um, and honestly, like just just those tools right there, I'm like, man, I can I can do a lot with that. You know, it's 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 very easy to be able to to produce uh, concrete, solid uh, ideas, products to clients just just using those set of tools. Um, yeah, that's that's sort of my workflow at the moment. When did you start using 3D? Like, because I imagine it was. I mean, why weren't you? Were you not using it before? 
Yeah, I mean, 3D for me uh, started, uh, I want to say, end of last year is when I started really getting into it, uh, hopping onto Gravity Sketch. Um, uh, prior to that, you know, there was definitely, um, I, I was definitely starting to see the, the, um, the emergence of, of more 3D in the footwear space. Um, however, it, it always, uh, it always kind of scared me to look at all the 3D programs. You know, I remember, uh, using AutoCAD <laughs> when I was in, in college and it was just like, it, it wasn't, it, it didn't like hit my creative juices. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. You know, it just, it just wasn't that immersive, you know? And so, um, it seemed very uh, dull. It kind of like took the spirit away from the creative side, at least from from what I knew, you know, because, you know, it's not like I had tried all the different programs at the time. And so it was always kind of like, man, I, I wish I could do something in 3D. But it just it just seemed like um, I was kind of working backwards and I, I didn't like that feeling. Right. And so and midway through um, last year or sometime in, in 2020, which 2020 and 2021 kind of blend together for me. This one year, I'm gonna call it. Um, they, uh, I, I started seeing a lot more uh, people sort of introducing their 3D work um, on Instagram, social media in general. And so um, right around that time is when I really started getting into uh, Instagram and you know starting my account you know starting to share my work previous to that i just it, i don't know it never really been my thing and so um you know from from seeing a lot of the people that i was looking up to you know they primarily they were all using uh, uh 2d form to you know showcase their 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 pieces uh from that to then all of a sudden everybody switching to 3d it was kind of like well wait a minute damn, everybody's doing it. I don't want to get left behind. And I think for me, one of the big things is that um, just I had several experiences at work where, you know, I would be working with uh, designers that had, you know, say 10, 20 years, uh, you know, on me in terms of experience, um, but they didn't know how to use Illustrator or Photoshop. And they were still using sketches and markers and all that, which I don't have a problem with that. It's just it. I think the thing that definitely rubbed me the wrong way is as as a creative, as a, especially as a designer, you know, because you're working for a company, you have to stay sort of on top of what the most current way of, you know, uh, of a work process is. And so I always had a little bit of like, ah, you know, I don't want to be that person. Right. And so uh when I started seeing all this sort of change in, in social media, then I was like, okay, I really, I really want to look into what it is that, you know, that has gotten everybody to switch over. And sure enough, it was Gravity Sketch, right? And so uh, when I first started getting into the idea of it, the, the, the idea of having to put a headset was like just very strange for me because I had never really used it, you know? And I, and I still remember, you know, at the time I I started talking to my colleagues about it. I was like, yo, like there's the, there's this new thing and, you know, you get to use a VR headset and you're creating a free space, you know, um, and everybody kind of looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and so, you know, there was definitely like that side where I was like, damn, you know, should I be doing this? Should I not? But I think the my inner sort of chi uh, child that's always wanting to learn new things was like, yo, you got to do it, right? It's probably going to be fun too. And so that's that's sort of where I got into it. Um, it took me about uh, two weeks uh, to kind of get used to, to, to using the program. And um, like, it, it was just, it was very intuitive. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I, that I loved about it. And, I think one of the biggest reasons why I got into it is because that's what I kept reading from all these different people that had transferred to to using Gravity Sketch. And so, um, you know, knowing that I had that in me that I could, you know, create, uh, you know, my my creations in, in a 3D space, I was like, OK, what do I do now? Like, I really want to push it. So then, you know, then there's the 
conversation of rendering. And so I started looking into it and, you know, the designers were using different programs, but I kept seeing Keyshot as one of them as well that just kept popping up, you know. And so I was like, OK, maybe I'll try this. And, um, you know, I remember when I first uh, started getting into Keyshot, my brother, uh, he works in the 3D field. Um, and he uses Blender and all these other, you know, uh, programs. And he kept telling me like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you shouldn't be going to all these other, you know, different programs that he, for him, like he doesn't really, he doesn't use those, you know, he has a very like specific way of working. And he's like, bro, like I can teach you all these things, you know, you don't have to learn by yourself. But I think there was definitely a part of me that I'm like, I've always looked up to my brother, you know, and so I've always wanted to be different. I think for those reasons, you know, like I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to be in his shadow for too long. And so I was like, no, nah, I got to I got to do this by myself. And so I went to uh, started getting in uh, on, on Keyshot and it just it, everything sort of came together. You know, is it definitely took a lot of uh, hours, a lot of uh, frustrating times, as you know, you would encounter with any other thing that you're going to work on that's new. You know, um, but to to be able to see the result in such a short time frame of things that you can build upon, it's just like it's it was mind blowing for me at the time so then i was like yeah i don't want to go back i don't want to go back to just you know being a, a 2d designer like this is this is where i want to be um it just opens up the doors for so many different uh, creative ways of, of thinking on a project and so that's that's sort of how i got into 3d um like i said it started um late last year and since then you know i've i've sort of been uh kind of honing in on on those skills and you know just keep improving finding better ways of working and uh yeah it's it's been great it's been awesome great. i mean i love how you say like you didn't want to stay being a 2d designer and now you're a 3d designer but at the end of the day you're still just a, like you're a designer like you know 2d or 3d it's really just the right. tools that you end up using um, and now tools are becoming easier mm -hmm. so mm -hmm in a way, allowing you to think in 3D and work in 3D on 3D products. Um, it's kind of like making sense for you. Right. So changing gears yeah, a sure. little bit. Um, yeah, that's been great. Mm -hmm. So what, what is like, what is it that really makes you passionate? I mean, we spoke a lot about your work, but what is it that you're trying to do? What's the future for Jose in the next few years? What are the things that you're really looking to pursue? At the moment, I'm working with um, uh, my friend and, and my brother on creating this uh, brand called Pale Purple. Um, my ideal future is is definitely it definitely includes Pale Purple, which is uh, um, essentially it's a brand where we're trying to uh, create. Um, we're starting with footwear product, but eventually it's going to have clothing as well. Um, but it's going to be a company that will have a uh, product that will um, highly sort of uh, in, the, in the fashion sort of side of things um, and then bringing it into three, I guess, the three different verses. You got the physical, you got the, you know, the NFT and then you got the metaverse. Right. And so uh, looking to have or build a, a sort of lane through that um, through that space, I guess. Um, so definitely in that sense, um, keeping Pale Purple as, as part of what the Jose brand is going to be in the future. Uh, in addition to that, <clears throat> I've always had my eyes on, at some point, um, building my own company. Um, I think I have... Um, and I've been told I have a very specific uh, look for the things that I do. And so I think I can I can bring something different. Um, I, I think I can bring something exciting um, where, you know, with Pale Purple, it can be filtered because it's a collaborative project. And, you know, I, I can create different things in that sort of in that sector. I think uh, having my own uh, personal brand would be uh, more of a true expression uh, of what I can produce. Um, so, you know, I want to start taking, I want to start taking my projects into, you know, a 3D printed space, which is now what I'm starting to look into. Um, you know, just like when I was first transitioning from, you know, uh, 2D to 3D, it's, you know, 
there's a lot of like sort of muddiness in, in which route to take, but it's something that I'm, I'm at this stage and I'm like, okay, what's the next and what's the next and what's the next? And right now for me is, is definitely uh, seeing what, you know, my 3D pieces can be in a physical form, right? Um, so that's, that's definitely like my next venture is moving into that. Now, in the meantime, obviously <laughs> I'm working with different clients, uh, you know, uh, primarily, um, smaller businesses, uh, startups. Um, and so that's what keeps the lights on <laughs> for the time being. Uh, but you know, it, it's, it's a growing process, you know, it keeps evolving as I go. Well, yeah. I mean, all those things sound super interesting. There's definitely a lot of really cool stuff coming from the 3D printing side of things, as well as the NFTs. And so yeah. it's just kind of like, yeah, we're really, we're really, we will really be looking forward to see what you produce on both of those sides. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll, we'll get an update at some point. Yeah. Yes, cool. for All sure. Right, Jose. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, it's been kind of like really interesting to hear about your story, about your process and about how you're thinking about your work and the combination of industrial design with, you know, footwear and with fashion and, you know, just how Jose thinks about things. So thank you so much for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate you guys taking the time. Like this has been really great. Right. So thank Thanks. you so bye -bye. much.